Now to the Middle East, and Israel says it's carried out a series of fresh airstrikes uh, against sites used by the Iran-backed Hezbollah militia in Lebanon. Now, Lebanese security sources say one of them targeted a Hezbollah commander. They declined to name him or to give details about his fate. Lebanese officials say Israeli strikes have killed more than 550 people since Monday. World powers have called for an immediate stop to the fighting amid growing fears of all-out war. Tens of thousands rushing north in search of safety. The race to escape Israel's attacks has left the roads to Beirut jammed with traffic. More challenges await the displaced here in the capital, key among them finding shelter. Schools like this one have opened their doors to those forced to flee. Yesterday was unlike anything I've been through before, despite having lived through many attacks. It truly felt like a full-scale war. There are many martyrs whose bodies are still under the rubble. Some are clear that they don't believe Israel is only targeting Hezbollah. We evacuated our homes because Israel is targeting civilians and attacking them. It is not striking military targets, only civilian ones. The Israeli military, however, says it has only been striking Hezbollah targets including weapon stores, missile launchers and other military infrastructure. It's also released videos like this one that it says proves the militia group is hiding weapons inside civilian buildings. This footage that hasn't been independently verified purportedly shows a missile exploding out of a house after it was hit by an Israeli strike. Lebanese authorities say hundreds of people have already been killed including at least 50 children. The wounded are flooding into Lebanon's already overburdened hospitals. Unfortunately, what we are seeing is that most of those who died as a result of yesterday's attacks were civilians in their homes. With Israel seemingly set on destroying Hezbollah's ability to attack Israeli soil, it's the Lebanese people who are once again caught in the middle. Now, Ronnie Shatter is a Lebanese commentator and host of the Beirut Banyan podcast. He joins us from the Lebanese uh, capital. Uh, welcome to DW, uh, Ronnie. What have you seen today? Well, unfortunately, it's a continued escalation in the last few days. Where you see Israeli strikes happening in Beirut on a daily basis. Another Hezbollah commander killed just moments ago, Talal Hamir, and an escalation in Israel's military push to what it looks like to be what is happening on the ground, a de facto buffer zone in South Lebanon, a depopulated South Lebanon, where Israel is determined to, to bring its citizens back north and at the expense of thousands of Lebanese fleeing their homes from southern Lebanon well into the capital. And I'll just add one thing. It's a terrifying experience to be in Beirut today. When you have strikes happening in Beirut and across the country, panic among many Lebanese that have fled the south into the capital. Israeli warplanes hovering over the sound of drones day in, day out. It's a nightmare scenario. Thank you for talking us through that, Ronnie. Our commentator and podcast host, Ronnie Shatter in Beirut. Straight to the Lebanese capital then, we can join our bureau chief uh, in Beirut, Mohamed Traitor. Welcome, Mohamed. Uh, second day of major strikes in Lebanon. Uh, what's the latest? The situation remains very volatile here in uh, Lebanon as the clashes continue on the border. A fresh wave of uh, heavy strikes, Israeli strikes, targeted uh, towns in uh, the south and the Beqa uh, region uh, a while ago. Uh, you know, the past uh, 24 hours were bloody. The death toll is uh, still at the increase, as the Lebanese uh, health minister uh, indicated uh, earlier uh, today. Uh, that count, that toll count uh, for one day uh, yesterday is already near uh, half of the uh, number of casualties in 33 days of uh, the 2006 war uh, between Hezbollah and uh, Israel. Uh, thousands of refugees are still uh, arriving uh, from the southern towns. Uh, families have spent their night in their 
cars on, on the roads uh, uh, yesterday, it already feels like a war in, in the country. Every aspect feels like uh, a war. And I'm hearing a lot uh, this from people. Uh, they, they feel that we are already into uh, the war and, uh, uh, you know, every aspect of life is reminding them of uh, the mood back in 2006. Right. So, so when world leaders, when, when everyone turns around and says, let's try to stop this from escalating into all-out war, people there uh, think, well, it's already started. Exactly. That's that's the uh, general uh, feeling. I mean, uh, you know, uh, Israel is is uh, renewing uh, warnings to uh, the Lebanese, and uh, uh, the influx is refugee of uh, refugees is still uh, ongoing. People are still stuck on uh, the roads. There's thousands of people uh, coming from the south to uh, Beirut and uh, northwards. So, you know, uh, schools uh, uh, have turned to be shelters for these uh, people. Uh, there's very few apartments left in Beirut uh, for rent. Uh, a lot of them have been booked by uh, these uh, refugees. Uh, a lot of uh, hospitals activities has been uh, disrupted to accommodate the numbers of uh, uh, casualties due to the Israeli airstrike. So really everything feels like war here in, in Beirut. A, a word about these Israeli uh, warnings. The military says it's warned people living near Hezbollah sites to move away. So are, are those sites well known and are people heeding those warnings? Well, these warnings were renewed uh, uh, a while ago by the Israeli uh, army. Uh, yesterday, uh, the Israeli uh, military uh, published a, a propaganda video uh, showing what it says are weapons hidden in uh, civilian casualties uh, facil facilities uh, uh, across the south and, and claiming that the militants uh, uh, of Hezbollah are using them to fire rockets uh, towards uh, Israel. Now, there's no way for us to verify these uh, claims uh, but, uh, you know, we've seen uh, user-generated uh, videos on social media coming from the south uh, showing um, uh, secondary explosions uh, following the Israeli uh, strikes on some posi positions in uh, the south. Uh, people have been fleeing their homes towards uh, Beirut and, and northwards, and that wasn't a safe uh, journey. Many of them told us that uh, they escaped several strikes on uh, their way out, and I've been hearing reports about elderly passing out in, in cars uh, as uh, they were jammed in huge uh, traffic. So this influx of refugees is uh, unprecedented and it's a bit chaotic. Uh, you know, it's unclear how the government will face this situation. OK, thanks for that uh, update, Mohammed. Uh, DW's uh, Beirut bureau chief, Mohammed Traitor. Let me bring you some of the latest updates from this conflict between Israel and Hezbollah as tensions uh, increase. Lebanon's health ministry says 558 people have died in Israeli strikes since Monday morning. 50 of those are children. More than 1,800 have been wounded. Schools in northern Lebanon, uh, in northern Israel and in Lebanon have been closed and flights to Beirut airport cancelled. The UN peacekeeping mission to Lebanon, UNIFIL, is in contact with both sides and urging de-escalation. It suspended patrols in the border area between Israel and Lebanon. France has called on the UN Security Council to hold an emergency meeting. In an interview with CNN, Iran's president said, they had said Hezbollah cannot stand alone against Israel and its Western allies. Now, Amiri Aizin is a retired Israeli Israel Defense Forces colonel with an extensive background in Israeli military intelligence. She also served as an international media advisor for a previous Israeli government, and she joins us from Tel Aviv. We're glad to have you. Welcome to DW. The Israeli army has released images which they say show the exact location of Hezbollah weapons are stored in civilian homes. Given that kind of intelligence, could the IDF have removed those weapons in a less destructive way and perhaps a lot earlier? So it's interesting you ask it in such a way. What you're saying is that we should have done a ground incursion? Wow, that's the next stage of a... We're in an aerial operation well, just where to you be don't clear, have ground... For, forgive me, I didn't suggest anything. I asked a question. Please continue. Absolutely. So um, I always wonder about what kind of, what do you do 
when you have an enormous arsenal. What the IDF put out yesterday was one example of one cruise missile held inside a private home in a village in southern Lebanon. And this is the kind of arsenal that Hezbollah has built up since the 2006 Second Lebanon War. It has built it up in the southern towns that are mainly Shiite towns, in the Beka Valley, and in the Dahia area of Beirut. Again, those are strongholds. And this illustration that the IDF put out is most definitely because we're not physically going into the towns and villages. That is a ground incursion, which would be, I say sadly, much more de deadly. Listening to Muhammad before, I can, my heart can go out to what's happening right now in Lebanon. And everybody is looking at Israel and I'm saying, look at what Hezbollah has built with the Islamic regime of Iran. You quoted before the Iranian president on his way to New York in that sense. He's going to the United Nations. And this is what the Islamic regime of Iran has supply to Hezbollah since 2006. Right. Cruise missiles, okay. UAVs, different types of weapons in the houses. Understood. And uh, as we heard from uh, Mohammed uh, a little earlier, there's no way for those images to be independently verified. We take what you say, we'll, we'll, we hear what you say, and we'll make our own minds up. The Prime Minister went on TV to tell the people of Lebanon, Israel's war is not with you, it's with Hezbollah. If that's true, why give them such short notice before yesterday's massive strikes? Hezbollah in Israel from October 8th. This is not a war that Israel is starting. Hezbollah, the day after Hamas attacked Israel, attacked Israel with rockets, with UAVs, with projectiles throughout the north and has done so every single day since. I'm talking about Hezbollah, the Shiite Lebanese organization. This isn't something disconnected that started yesterday when Israel took the initiative. I think that all of us, and I want to hope that our viewers would actually agree that none of us want a terror entity in the houses next door, that we don't want to support them. And in that sense, when we are telling people up front, beware, you know who's in the house next door, you know what's in their weaponry, it's an enormous amount. We're not talking about that in Israel giving early warning. We are doing so in a way to try to save lives. Um, I don't think any war is nice. And I've lived for the last 11 months, 11 and a half months, in a country at war, both against Hamas in the Gaza Strip and Hezbollah from the north. And I'll remind all of us that Hezbollah in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, and the Houthis from Yemen have also attacked us. This isn't something Understood. that started yesterday. You said, my heart goes out uh, to the people in this uh, terrible, terrible plight. Would it have been more humane for uh, the Israeli military to give people more time to pack up their lives? Do you think that there is any war in which there are no, I mean, no humanitarian issues? Um, war is a terrible thing. There Forgive is me no for, nice for, for, for interrupting, but if the, the answer, if the answer is no, no. well, I'm, I'm happy to take that. Um, I, I, what I don't want to do is relitigate how we got there, how we got to where we are. So the, the question was, would it have been more humane to give people more time to pack up, the, up their lives? That's a simple yes or no. I'll, I'll take your answer and then we'll move on to the next. Um, I would like to give early warning to terror entities that they shouldn't be there. And I can feel bad for the civilians. I am actually very proud, and I say proud, of the fact that the Israeli military gives warning. Sir, no militaries worldwide, anywhere, give warning. Certainly terror entities don't. So let's take it as the fact that we do give warning. What you're asking is why couldn't we have given more warning? Um, a day, a week, let's let Hezbollah move all of their weapons out. They're a terror entity. Um, so as Understood. I said, I'm proud okay. that we give early warning. I don't think answer. it's a question of how Thank long. you so much. We're nearing the first anniversary of those terrible October 7th Hamas terror attacks against Israel. What is your reading of why Israel's intelligence gathering against Hezbollah seems so extensive while its intelligence on H Hamas failed so woefully nearly a, a year ago? 
part of the answer is within your question. Both myself as an expert, and I think that the IDF, the entire intelligence community in general, were very focused on Hezbollah before October 7th. I'll share with you and the viewers that when the rocket alarm went off at my house on October 7th at 6.29 a.m., my question was, oh, has Hezbollah started its attack? And I say that because the plan that Hamas enacted of a ground, air, sea attack, the tunnels, et cetera, as they came in, they didn't use the tunnels at the end. This is something that the IDF had been following Hezbollah training for for years before the October 7th Hamas attack. And that is why you're seeing a much more systematic, clear-cut initiative that Israel knows to take against Hezbollah because it was something that was being prepared for years against a Hezbollah attack. And I think you can see that clear difference. And the whole thing is that I say as an expert, I was wrong about Hamas. I was not looking at them. I didn't see it. There was a lot of information there. I was very focused on Hezbollah. Good talk. Do you thank you for talking us through that? Retired IDF colonel, former Israeli government media advisor, Amiri Eisen. Thank you. Thank you. We want to get the latest now from Israel, so let's cross over to our correspondent, Tanya Klima, in the port city of Haifa, which is just 40 kilometres from the Lebanese border. Good to see you, Tanya. Overnight, Israeli intercepted missiles over Haifa, where, uh, where you are. What sort of damage has daylight revealed there? Well, there have been about uh, 30 uh, launches uh, across uh, northern Israel overnight and in the morning. But, of course, this number uh, keeps on changing. Yesterday, Hezbollah launched over 200 rockets towards uh, northern Israel in retaliation for Israel's uh, operation in southern uh, Lebanon. And we're hearing here from rescue services that two people were lightly hurt, mostly from shrapnel uh, falling down, but also others uh, were hurt on their way to shelters. A lot of people also treated for uh, anxiety. Um, so what it means here for life uh, in, in the north is that uh, more schools have been cancelled now in more communities. Uh, the in-person uh, uh, teaching has been cancelled and the entire country has now been put under special emergency uh, mode. So that gives the authorities uh, a quicker hold of things to change uh, um, uh, measures here in the country. However, having said that, uh, Hezbollah has expanded the range and, uh, of its rockets deeper inside Israel, mostly of the north, and also used heavier weapons. It has so far caused only limited damage, and it's not as intensive as maybe expected, but it means also more people are now under rocket fire threat. Uh, than uh, those that have been under rocket fire uh, in the past month in the northern areas. Tanya, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told citizens to prepare themselves mentally for war. Does the public support the government's conduct in Lebanon? Well, I think while there is a lot of apprehension and worry uh, what is there to come if there would be an all-out war now with Hezbollah, uh, in Lebanon uh, uh, about the potential consequences then uh, for Israel. I think most uh, do believe that uh, the situation has to change with the daily uh, uh, attacks by Hezbollah in, uh, since October last year on northern Israel uh, and to uh, enable people who were evacuated at the time. Now, for one year, they were not able to go home. So there is some substantive support for Israel uh, in these uh, war efforts. But having said that, this is basically uh, when it comes to uh, war efforts from the air that might change if Israel opts or the military goes in uh, uh, with its ground forces. That is much more uh, risky for soldiers for a potential uh, ground uh, invasion. So there is support uh, that this problem, as it's being discussed, needs to be dealt with. Uh, the heavy uh, rockets uh, that are stationed in, that are pointed at uh, Israel uh, from uh, Hezbollah. But uh, there's also not that much confidence uh, in diplomatic efforts as of now to push back Hezbollah uh, from the border. And uh, at the moment, there is also, there seems to be uh, no de-escalation uh, in the cards. DW's Tanya Klima in Haifa. Thank you so much.